Now, before you begin, it's important to have a clean workspace. What I'm using here is I have a spill kit pad underneath and I have white paper towel. And I'll change these paper towels out frequently throughout the video. Um, but I like having the paper towel because it gives you a nice white background that uh, you can see everything on. And the spill kit pad absorbs anything that goes through that. And the paper towels are cheap and easy to replace. Um, ideally, you'd want to have like a nice stainless transmission table where you can have it all... Uh, clean but uh, this is how I'm doing it and moving on to disassembly here before you even begin and touch this thing with a screwdriver uh, make sure you take pictures as you go uh, it's important as uh, especially if it's your first time or your second time um, I'm sure some guys can do this blindfolded but for the beginners out here it's really good to take pictures then if you're not sure how something went you can go and look back to it so for as an example if you're pulling a valve or a spring out you take a picture of how it comes out and which direction it faces. And then you know, okay, when you put it back together, this spring goes there, that faces that way. Another thing is when you remove things, keep them kind of together. So if I know that this bolt goes with that and this all stays together, then I keep those bolts together and all these bolts stay together. Um, now moving on to the valve body part here, uh, I removed all the bolts for this section and then I had to remove the, uh, I believe this is the TV kind of line pressure set thing over here. I'm not super well versed in the nomenclature of the valve body. I just kind of know how to do it. Um, separate the valve body. I forgot a screw. I'm going to lay this out nicely like that. Take your separator plate. Now take this down nice like that. Try to be very methodical in everything you do and uh, make sure you kind of, if it goes like this and Excuse me if I have some odd cuts in the video. It takes a lot of brain power to be very careful as well as comment and film. And sometimes I just have to set the camera aside and pay attention. Um, point being separating all these valve bodies and uh, making sure that you have all these balls intact and it doesn't just end up flying everywhere. Moving on, um, this is a great thing to take a picture of before you begin just to make sure you have you know where everything is. I believe later in the in the uh, uh, build of the valve body a lot of these check balls end up not be getting used um, so we're going to step one on the tfod kit it says to drill one or two uh, holes down through the bottom of the out most outboard passage so uh, to kind of depending on what you're building this for i imagine a lot of guys are going to go for two holes and probably with a larger hole size so this valve body's already had it drilled um, don't do like well you're gonna have to flop this over and disassemble it all so just hopefully you took your picture already. Um, the holes are drilled right here on that section. So these are two holes. They're done at uh, 096, and that gives you a much firmer lockup. Firm lockup's good. Uh, I imagine if you're doing a man manual valve body, you're going to want this thing to be as gnarly as possible. Step two is a mod for loop and converter flow. So we're going to look at the PR valve bore. And when I'm doing these, I like to have it so the uh, what you're working on is the same as the picture when you're holding it. So the PR valves right here. Set that aside and uh, take note where that goes that way and that goes that way. It's important to remember which way it all goes together. Um, the TFOD comes with the uh, drill bits to do all this, but I always like to take a caliper and just measure and make sure it's all right in case I misplace the drill bit. Um, so you have to kind of go in from the right side here and uh, kind of in at an angle here. So you're coming in above this. So yeah. Drill bit Chuck couldn't grab the bit, so I had to switch drills here. But on with the show. broke the bit so luckily when the drill bit broke it got all the way through already and i just took the remains of the broken bit ran it through um after drilling of course break clean the hell out of all this and make sure there's no metal shards or anything uh also clean the this before you put it back in even though you might have thought you sent it down any clean surface it's pretty easy to like have a piece of dirt get picked up or like this broken drill bit and uh get caught in there and you really don't want to have any problems next up we've got the uh 
three land or step three, which is grinding the four land switch valve. If you have it, if you have a three land switch valve, I guess you don't have to do this. So that is right here above it. And the piece you'll be grinding is this piece right here. This is symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter where, just make sure you grind it correctly. I'm gonna draw this in my vise and use a hand file so I can do this as precise as possible. Actually looking closer at this, this does look like a aftermarket switch valve because this body, valve body already kind of had a shift kit in it. So I'm just gonna leave this as it is. As I mentioned, it kind of accomplishes the same thing. Um, for doing your own, I guess the, the switch valve is gonna kind of look like about this kind of thickness and it says in the instructions to grind it at an angle to about half the thickness and you only have to do one of the grinds. Step four is with the manual valve removed, you want to take a file and file a notch halfway through. So also being this is a modified valve body, this has already been done. Um, kind of looks like either it was done by a drill or a file or something like that, but I'll still disassemble it here so we can go through it. Take a pick, this is kind of like a miniature flathead, but it works all the same. Pull off that clip, do it like that, and this pops out like that. And then this assembly comes out. Now we're gonna try and keep this all together. So, like so. I'm just gonna keep the, the clip nearby. Okay, so now we have access to this, uh, I think, spool valve, I think. Pull it out. Once again, remember which way it comes out. Um, however, I believe this uh, valve body kit comes with a new one. Now, I got a nice round file here. They say you can use the uh, edge of a large file and it says it's not fussy. So I don't think there's any real specific method or like way to do it. It's just important to have the notch. So I'd probably start like this and just keep going until it makes a nice notch. I've seen some, some valve bodies kind of have a really ugly one and this one's a little nicer and don't be picky with it, I guess. Oh, moving on to uh, page two, we've got step one here, which involves a TV valve. And looking at the graph, look back to this, TV valve is located in here. Now I'd already move, removed all this because it's sometimes it's a little bit fussy, you kind of got to shake the valve body. Um, now this TV valve, it, as you pull it out like this, you have to grind the stem down. Now this one's already been done, so unfortunately I also can't show that step. But if I was going to do it, I'd probably use a... Uh, bench grinder again or if I don't have the bench if you don't have a bench grinder then just a file might might work good but just be careful when you're doing it um, not to jaw it on this nice machine surface here and gall it um, so maybe just the belt sander or even sandpaper I don't know how long that would take though having to sandpaper it down um, something to consider at least then after completing that uh, there should be a new yellow spring that's furnished in with the valve body kit so this one just, I guess this might be an original or an aftermarket spring and it's orange. So I'm gonna remove that, have this on a TV valve, and then have this like that. And then the big hole inboard. So there's a big hole on that side, small hole on that side. So make sure you have that inboard. Like so. Plastic brake clean. Another thing also, when you're cleaning things with brake clean and handling them, make sure your hands are clean too. Like, you can think the part is clean, but as you're handling it, you know, I get a piece of dirt on here and I put dirt on the valve body stem and you know, it's pretty easy to have one little piece of sand mess up your whole operation. Step three, we're gonna put the rooster comb back in. So we need the mumbly peg, which is this little steel rod, kind of a funny name. And then you'll need your detent ball and spring. Now this has an upgraded bullet style, which is much easier to put in. But if you have the ball and spring, it's not as fun, but it's okay. It's not too bad to do. Um, you could look into buying this uh, detent ball if you wanted. There, put that in there. And then we have that sitting like that, and then reassemble the rooster comb. So that is right here. You also want to grab your new manual valve. Um, so yours, it's going to look quite a bit different. 
Uh, this is some aftermarket one, and I'm not entirely too sure what the rhyme or reason is behind how they design these things, but I just use what they supply, and that's what they want. So that manual valve goes in the hole where you uh, filed that notch. Don't, don't force it. It should kind of slide in there nice. And we'll take our rooster comb assembly, put it in there like that, and line up the foot, and then push down. Mumbly pig comes out. Come on. Fill out. There you go. Take the TV valve. Put it in. Should push nicely down here. And then take washer. That. Make sure you don't stab a hole in your hand when you do this. There we go. Done. Step four is the manual valve position. So you're going to flip your valve body over and uh, you're going to shift it into park here. You want to make sure this moves nicely. Now, this is park where it's in the most. And there's a partition. So we've got one, two, three, four. So the fourth line in, look in the valve. One, two, three three, four, be right there. I'm gonna just make sure that's flush. You can just see the light glimmer on it right there. Looks pretty flush to me. It says within 30 thou uh, in or out is okay. But if it isn't okay, then you bend the arm tip of pliers, which would be this arm tip right here. Now, step five is for a firmer one, two shift. You leave ball C out. Now ball C. I believe this is this ball right here um my other 47 re valve body i did this and it bangs one too like it's awesome however this transmission i'm working on um i don't feel like pulling the overdrive housing to do the uh firmer shifts and you but if you're going to do this and you already have your trans apart really recommend doing it it is awesome um but i'm curious by not doing that to see how well it shifts for uh one two so we'll find out um, just to give you an idea of where the rear servo parts go, we're underneath the trans here. It's the front, there's a bell housing, drum, coming over, here's the rear servo. So what you have to do is you have to pull the overdrive housing off of the transmission. And I'm doing this with the trans still in the truck. Um, which you could put a jack kind of around here, support the trans, and then don't even have to pull the trans to do this. Just pull the overdrive section off, and then you'll have access to a pin that goes through here. Now you'll back off this adjuster, you'll push the pin out, and then it'll get the arm out of the way, and then this whole rear server will come out. And in the TFOD, there is a supplied little kind of round, about half inch uh, spacer. I don't have it because my buddy put it in his trans and I'm boring this TFOD 3 off of him. Um, but you'll put the spacer inside there and uh, then put it all back together, and that allows you to have the firm one, two shift. Well, step two, I'm going to remove the side plate here and then uh, take note of the position of these valves and replace these springs. So, pull these screws off, take the spring, put it in there. Excuse me, there's a little out of place. Um, here's step one for page three. You want to install a black spring in the side of the component that goes right here. So you'll take it, take this piece, slide it out like that. Take your other thumb, catch the spring, remove it. Um, this new one's quite a bit longer. Slide that in, piece, and then uh, getting this might be, might, take, might give me some trouble here. Um, what I'm gonna do, take a screwdriver, and push it down. Oh. After a lot of searching, that's back in there and of course, bolt it all back together. Okay, with the orange spring in, it's kind of tough to get this back on squarely. Uh, so what I did is I took two of the longer bolts, which hold the whole valve body together, screwed them in a couple threads of the same thread. Then I take one of the short bolts, put it in the center, make sure the springs are sitting there nicely, push down and then grab your tool. So the torque spec for all these Torx bolts is 60 inch pounds, which is five foot pounds. 
and my torque wrench that is just right on the bottom of what it does so what i did is i set it to five foot pounds i put it in the vise and just make sure it seems like a fair amount of torque uh and it does click when you put it in the uh, vise because sometimes you put something super low and maybe it'll mess it up and it won't click that's something really important to check also it's 105 inch pounds for the bolts to hold the valve body to the trans or about 10 foot pounds um also there's a last option there's a german spec which is guten tight and you just kind of go as like you know what feels good everyone kind of has their own internal torque spec um but for the purposes of the video and doing it right um and also because of the sensitivity of the valve body i'm going to not do the german spec but i'll do the uh oh um wrong side <laughs> i'll do that no I'll, I'll do the uh torque wrench method Right there, just barely. It's pretty light. You get the idea. Now step three is a little weird. I haven't done this yet, but this is 47 RH specific. So if it's, if you have a 47 RE, just ignore this step and move on to the next page. Um, but for the RH models, there's a plug in this separator plate. So we'll come over here. And it's this hole, third one in, that large hole right there. We need to put a plug in, and the kit comes with this little plug. That's, what's kind of weird is uh, this like fits in here, like it falls right through. And they say that you should grab a 7 16 or larger drill bit and by hand turn it in the plate hole. So uh, 7 16 fit right through it. So I'm just going to pull this off, set it there take our plate and I guess the idea is you want to turn it by hand and kind of grind down a little chamfer into it on both sides um, so I'm going to do this and I'll, and I'll show what, what I think it should look like okay so I took the drill bit and I grind it down and it kind of has like a chamfered edge um, to imagine what they want uh, I'll be honest I grabbed my Milwaukee drill and I just went at a super slow speed and did it by hand. <laughs> um, so now we take this plug piece. It fits nice and flush in there. Plug, hold the plate down close to the hole. Smack the plug three to four times with a hammer. Okay. Well, I'll be damned. I laid it on my vise and I hit it with a hammer a couple times. And this actually worked really well. So it says after that, you want to file the plug flush on both sides of the plate. So the back side, which is against the vise, is pretty flush. But I'm going to take my file and just kind of file it nice and... Wow, I didn't think that would work as good as it does, but I guess they wouldn't tell you to do it if it didn't. Moving on to page four, and excuse me, my uh, printer had a fight with this page, is the 1-2 shift valve, or governor valve. So it will remove the side cover here on the side of the valve body. We want to take the Transgo Gov valve. Send this kit over here. Looking close to the picture, the 1-2 gov valve is on the large hole facing towards the uh, rooster comb kind of area. So let it be right here. Pull this out. This looks like it might be some aftermarket one because it's purple. So set that aside. The trans to go 1-2 gov valve. I don't necessarily know if that one's better than this one, but I'm just going to put in what they supply. Sure, it's nice and clean. Just to slide in there nicely, just like that. Push it in by hand. Good to go. Bolt the cover back on, and on the next step. Step two, and excuse the uh, messed up printing, is the enforced, reinforced lockup bracket, which is this right here. So you'll remove these three screws on this plate right here, uh, as well as while you're doing that. Uh, for step three, you want to enlarge in that hole to 063. And it says for modified engines that need more lockup, let's be real, if you're doing a manual valve body, you've probably got a modified engine. So, so do that. So the valve, the drill bit they supply is the right size. Pull that off, drill that out. Pretty simple. Make sure that you clean up any of the burrs and that it's nice and shaved down. And this already has the reinforced lockup bracket but 
May as well just put the other one on, because just like that. There you go. Put the plate on. And the screws, and you're good to go. Coming over to this part of the valve body, I'm going to tell you about one mod that you have to do. This is second gear lockup. And it doesn't matter what you're using the truck for. You don't even have to use second gear lockup all the time. But you should do this mod. Now, coming on this piece here, this is the passage you're going to want to fill. And I took some brake clean. I blasted it out. Then I took some paper towel. And I cleaned it in there nicely. Now, to fill this, you're going to think it's kind of janky. But this is what the... What you what you do is you mix up some JB weld and you just just clomp it in this passage here. Don't worry about making too much of a mess. Um, you'll kind of leave it so it's bulging over, and then after it's dry the next day, because uh, it has to sit overnight, you uh, clean it off with a razor blade to make it nice and flush. So. <clears throat> I've done this to my other manual valve body. It's worked great. And multiple other people have done it. Um, I'm going off of a form post that uh, shared how to do this. It's, it's this simple. So I'll uh, follow up tomorrow after it's all cured.